Welcome to this week's episode of Travo Travels and I'm in the beautiful townland of Kilmore Yarty near Porterdown in County Armagh. I'm here to meet father and son team Pat and Peter McKeever of the Longmeadow Cider Company and they're going to show me how to make cider. So I am as happy as a pig. Pat, how are you? Too bad, Paul. Welcome Absolutely to Longmeadow Cider. And this is what it's all about? This is what it's all about. So what kind of apples have we got going these on here? These are kitty. Katie. We, just, we just finished picking these here yesterday. Eating apples? Yep. Okay. Lovely mm. and sweet. These are beautiful. And you're going to show me... They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. You're going to show me how to transform this box of apples into a bottle of cider. Yes. This i got to see. How are we going to do that? Well, I'll tell you what. Peter's up in the yard here at the minute getting ready. We'll put this on the tractor. There you go. Jump on the tablet. Me jump up on the tip? Yeah, I don't think you're that heavy, are you? Well... I might start the squashing the well, squashing they're going to, already. <laughs> they're going to be squashed anyway. Perfect. So jump I jump on, on board. There, Lovely and stuff. I get the tractor. Fantastic. How cool is this? I'm sinking. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh, this is just brilliant. It's actually very comfortable. <laughs> All right. Ready when you are, Pat. All I need now is a blonde. I'll be flying. <laughs> Ah, oh, thanks a million. Well, in every father and son team, there must be a son. <laughs> and you're the son. Peter, Paul, how, are you? how are you doing? Not so bad, I think. Very good, thanks. So, talk me through. We've got the apples, we're here. What's about to happen? Well, I'll just, I'll explain to you here first, because it is, it's going to get loud now. So right. First, we've got our bin. It's into our bin tipper. Yeah. And it's tipped onto our rack. Okay. On our rack here, we, we sort through the apples. So Take out any bad ones. They're not but too many because they're freshly picked. Right. But you'll get the odd small one, the, yeah. odd, the, odd, the odd rotten one, but they're cleaned and they're sorted. They're fed up through our belt here. Wow. They go straight on up through the belt and they're then pressed into our, our hammer head here first. Okay. So what's, what's going on in there now? The hammer head is, it's mulching the apples up. Okay. It's mulching them up constantly, so it is, and then it's dropped down into here into our bottom tray. Okay. So it's, it's not a pulp, it's just like a mash, basically. Right. So then it's pumped straight into the apple press. Okay. Pumps into the apple press, and you'll get to see it going now once to turn around, obviously. Yeah. But this is our two belts here. The, the press is, it's a double belt press, so it's pressing the apples into the double belt. Okay. So you'll get your juice at one end, and then the apple waste goes to the other end. So all the juice comes out here, Uh huh. and everything that you don't want is out there? At the other end, yeah, uh, and it goes is straight Is that for, dumped, or what, what do you do? No, it goes straight to cattle, chickens, pigs. Excellent. So it's not wasted. Brilliant. Local farmers would take it in, so they would. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I suppose, like, it's fresh apples. Now, this yoke is going to make a hell of a amount of noise, is it? Oh, it is, yeah, so... Yeah. Will we start her up yeah, and see it in course. action? Belt away. No bother. Shut the machine off. Very Cheers. Cheers. I tell you what, lad, you weren't lying about the noise anyway, sure you weren't. Oh, no, it's very loud now when it's going, but uh, the but juice is gorgeous now when it's say, pressed. It's just, it's beautiful. It is. It's lovely and fresh now, so it is. I've, I, I'll be honest with you, I've never had fresh apple juice like that. I don't care what they say <laughs> comes out of a bottle. I've never had it like that. Well, that's entirely different, and so it is. to see it being made in front of your eyes, it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing, like, isn't it? But that ain't cider, sure it's not. No, that's your juice. Right, so what do we do next? How if do we... you come outside and I'll show you what we do next with our juice. Okay, uh, can I bring this with me? Yeah, of course, <laughs> work away. I'm not this one go. <laughs> so he, these are the full caskets that we call it, or? They're ABC cubes. Right. These are cubes that we've pressed out the past couple of days. So pretty much what we just saw happen there. Yep. This is it. I have to pump straight into an ABC cube and we fill them up. Okay. And then this goes away to storage and it ferments out for another six to seven weeks. Right. And then after that process... But is this natural now? Is it natural That's fermenting? natural juice, yep. Okay. That's natural juice and then it's fermented out and then we have to rack it off again, so we do. Okay. And then that's another six or seven weeks. Now what does that mean? We basically, we're racking it off, we're... 
We're dispersing out of one cube and it's going into another one. Okay. It's to restart the fermentation. Right. It's to build up your alcohol level now, so it is. Okay. It's to create a nice cider, so it is. Well, I'm back to meet your dad. We're going no to have problem. a bit of a chat and tell me exactly what he does. He, he'll have a few bottles of cider for me, will he? Oh, he will, surely. I tell a few you cold what, ones, anyway. As good as that is, I can't wait to try the cider. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you're a gen. Thanks a million. No, Paul, thank Very you. Gonna best no bother. Luck. I love it. Absolutely love it. Pat, I said to Peter that uh, a huge part of Trebo Travels, it's about meeting the people behind the product. For me, that's that's crucial. And like I, I'm just like in awe of what you have in operation here. Father and son team, family involved, and the size of the orchard that you have here and what you're doing is incredible. But just tell me, bring it back to about 18 months ago when you got into your head that you were gonna do the cider. Like, where did you come up with this? Well, I took over the home, the home farm business here after my father passed away 22 years ago. And like, uh, we started to take on rented orchards for other cider uh, companies. But about two years ago, Peter, he wanted to come home to the home farm, and we said we'd need to maybe try and do something for him. And uh, Peter, he just said one night, what about cider? Sort of got the head thinking, you yeah. know, and says, right, we got, our, we got our first batch uh, crushed in 2013, and we got it bottled and had it ready for Christmas and we took it off, took off from there. We launched it at the Balmar show and it was a great success there. People liked the product. Uh, after the show, the phone started ringing. Yeah. Uh, threw us in a couple of cases there, different cases. At that stage, we had no distributor. Uh, it was Peter and I was going out in the van. Around in the van, I love it. And love we it. were just case here, case there, and, and doing the tasting, then doing different shows at the weekends and all. And uh, by the end of that year, I think we had over 15,000 bottles away. Wow. You know, and like so far this year, we have, uh, by the end of July there, we had 50,000 bottles away. And like, you know, it, like it's only a year and a half. A year and a half? Year From and a half. 800 bottles? From 800 bottles. To 50,000? To 50,000 bottles. Guys, I'm having a brilliant day here. I've seen literally from the orchard, from the apple, getting the lift, Seeing the press with you, Peter, seeing the juice come out, which is just the, the most beautiful apple juice I've ever had in my life. Pat, we had a great stroll going through the orchard and a great chat. And what's, what I love about it is you've given me a great feel for what you guys do. And I'm in awe of it. I, th I think it's absolutely amazing. I really do wish the best of luck because it's, it's just fantastic. Family-run business, you guys are working your asses off. And, and I love it. I love that fact. And, but the moment has come. You've got three different types of cider. So talk me through them. Right. We have our medium. Right. We have our oak aged and we have our blossom burst. So which would you like to try first? You tell me which is right. the best to go. We'll try our medium. Beautiful. So we have, this is our medium. And we have more Bramley apple in it. Yeah. So it's a bit more crisp and more sharper. And the Bramley apple, we saw that down in the yes. orchard as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. There's a beautiful color of them. Isn't it? But it's almost like a champagne the way, like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't see that now in any of the, look at the, the way it's holding yeah. the, the fizz there. I think I'll try that. Really. That, that is fantastic. That. Good luck to you. Oh, lads, don't worry. This is this has only just begun. We have another two types to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get rid of me that easy. That's quality. That That's is quality. Room. That is we absolute quality. Difference. We'll try our blossom burst next. Okay. okay. So explain to me the difference between this one and the medium. Right. Our medium, we have more Bramley apple in it. Okay. Uh, so our blossom burst, we have pulled back on the Bramley on it. We, we add more uh, sweet apple to it when we're crushing uh, to ferment uh, out into the alcohol. And that's the sweet apple we so, also saw on yes, the same tree yep. inside. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot of Katie and Elstar, John and Gold in this here, and different types of sweet apple on all the different orchards we have around the country. Wow. I'm not giving you all the Well, stuff. I was going to say, I tried to get it out of Peter and there was just, there was no <laughs> chance. You know what he gave me? He gave me that old tick kind of smile and it looked as if to say, nothing. Well, you're getting nothing more. I tell you what, you've, you've been well trained. You've been well trained. You'll see now it's, it's a wee bit, it's a wee bit more uh, goldy. Yeah. And would you say, like, say eating? Would you recommend any particular one? Everyone thinks like you know, you just going out to the pub and have a beer, but like cider goes great with food. Yes, our medium's going. Down, we've noticed our medium's going down very well in the bars. Right. Doing a survey, our blossom burst is going down very well. Going out of the off sales in the evenings. Okay. Uh, with barbecues. Yeah. It, it's like it's, it's more smoother. Yeah. So it is. 
so it's nice in the palate and it goes down well with the meal, so it does. It's incredible the difference. Isn't it? I like that one. You like that one? Oh geez, well I like the first one but I like that one more. That's lovely. Now this here is our oak aged. This is the be, big boy, this is the this real kind of, yeah. This would be more for a dry person. Right. You know, see the difference in the oh, colour. Oh wow, look at that. It's so much darker, we're gonna, isn't it? We'll just show you now. You set that down, you'll see the difference in wow. the two products. That's because it was oak aged. So when you say oak aged, what's that in mean? The like? cast, in the casks. That are underneath us? Yes, it was put in the casks for over a year. For over a year? Mm -hmm. So, like I mean, when you they say the wine, will it have picked up some of the yes, flavour from? Yes, from it, has, it has it's picked up a lot of the flavours. When you first taste it, you'll taste um, you'll taste the strongness and the dryness. Yeah. You'll get the, um, you'll get a, a wee bit of the flavour of maybe what uh, whiskey was in it. Then you'll get you'll taste the cider naturally, but at the back of your throat, everybody's palate's different. But at the back of your throat, you'll get the smokiness, yeah. the oak, the oakiness taste. Oh, it smells fantastic. That's good. Isn't it? That is good. Oh yeah. I like that. I said it already, I, I'm just, what you're doing is, is fantastic and like the whole world needs to know about this because it's a premium product. You can get it into countries all over the world. They just go onto your website or find out through That's a right. distributor and it's amazing. And I, I can't wish you enough luck because like this is what we need to be championing. This is what the show is all about is meeting people like Pat and Peter here. Like you, you won't get this anywhere else. It's a brilliant product. I'm thinking food. Can I rob a few apples you off you? Surely you can a few apples. I might rob a few, I might rob no a few, problem. just like, you know, for research purposes. No problem. Because coming up after the break, guys, we're heading off to a beautiful location back in town. And I'm going to be cooking with some of your apples. Very good. With an archaeologist. What the hell does an archaeologist know about food? We're about to find out. Don't go anywhere. See you after the break. Welcome back after the break, guys. And after enjoying that amazing cider down in Long Meadow, we're here in the Navin Centre in Armagh, where I'm going to be showing how they used to cook about 2,000 years ago, having a great chat with an archaeologist, seeing some amazing things, because this is what Trevo Travel is all about, bringing you to places like this, because I want you to see it too. So come on in and join me, and wait till you see what's coming up. Check this out. I'm about to go back in time, about 2,000 years into this dwelling to see how they would have cooked back then. I'm, I'm excited about this. Come on, guys, you're gonna love this one. in time literally look at the state of me this is what happens when the director takes over the shoot come on let's go check this out Finn how are you doing Paul how are you explain to me I've just seen you throw a hot rock into a pit well I've been doing this actually for the last day for you I've been expecting you I am um, this is called a fullock fear and we fill it up with hot stones and uh, and water, right. and the hot stones boil the water. I'll show you. Yeah. Because uh, I've been doing all the hard work, as you've been lounging about. <laughs> and you put it in, and it boils the water. Let me do that. Yeah. So you basically, you've got a fire lighting here. We've had a fire going all day and all yeah. night, and it heats the stones, and then you keep adding hot stones to it, and it boils the water. And what we've got wrapped up in some grass for you is a lovely bit of pork. Beautiful. So this is how they would have done it about two thousand years ago. This is how we do it. Now we only do it for special occasions. Yeah. So you're quite an honoured guest to get it. So just drop and it just in. just put it straight in. Put it straight in. And if you listen, do you hear it boiling the water? My wife would be sticking her toes in there now thinking it's a spa. Well, my wife does the same, so <laughs> I wouldn't worry. <laughs> How long are you talking like about cooking that? I mean, this obviously takes a long time. It takes a long time. Um, well, we've um, stomachs that can last a long time with hunger. So yeah, yeah. usually we go by when the sun's over there. So when it's here, we know it's ready. But if it's a large piece of meat, it takes all night. Yeah. 
So we sometimes would cook a full uh, side of deer in that, wow. or a full side of pork. Um, sheep as well, because there's not much meat on them. Yeah. It's an awful lot of fat. So we'll boil those in it, and then our wives will bathe in it, because it's great for their skin. Fantastic. So the meat's inside, it's wrapped in grass, mm -hmm. and it's boiled, and you did that for me last night. So we'll yep. take it out and have a look. Oh, it'd be great to see it. This is great. So this is it right down here. That's it just there, wrapped in the grass. I use my hands. So you just wrapped it up in, in the grass like that? Just nice and long grass. And that kind of protects it? Yep, absolutely. This is brilliant. And there's a plate for you. Lovely, look! Look at that! Wow! And the grass to go with it as well. I love mm -hmm. that. Now, Extra flavour. Oh, this looks and smells absolutely fantastic. Now I know that's a method of about 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. but when you see a little bit of pork or a little bit of bacon, all you can think of is cabbage and a parsley sauce. Mm. Will we head over there and try and whisk up something? Sounds good to me. I tell you what, this is fantastic. So Finn, explain to me, like this is just like a normal kind of pit, basically. It is, yeah, this yeah. is what we normally cook on. You'll see the pot above the fire, and yeah. in and that we'll cook um, nettle soups and broths, and uh, we even make a porridge. Wow. So yeah, we look after ourselves pretty good here. Well, this this is my style. Try Trevo Travels, this is what I'm doing. Cooking on the fire, like, I don't know, maybe I was around 2,000 years ago. I think you're living in the wrong age. You should be living <laughs> with me. Well, I tell you what I've done. I've just done a very simple um, kind of white sauce here. So you mix equal quantity, so about an ounce of butter, an ounce of flour, melt it, cook out the flour, and about half a pint of milk to three quarters of a pint of milk. A Little bit of mustard, salt, and pepper, and it wouldn't be a parsley sauce unless we threw in a bit of parsley. So what goes on here? Like, is there is there tours coming in there here? There is, yeah. yeah. We're, we're a very popular place. We're, we're open uh, throughout the year. Yeah. And in the summertime, the dwelling's open for tourists. So we get people from all over the country and from all over the world come to visit us here at Navin because well, it's such a famous place. I tell you what, now, I'll be very honest with you. I'd never heard of this place before. And that's why I'm delighted here. That's why I'm telling you guys, this is why you want to be coming to places like this. It's in our country. Never mind heading abroad. These are the kind of places we need to be visiting and supporting. So a little bit of parsley. Lovely. We just throw it in. And do you think they wouldn't have cooked or anything like this? But I see like they they were good gardeners back then as well. Though. They would have had oh, herbs as well. Absolutely, they had yeah. herbs for both uh, medicine and also for cooking. So they weren't frightened of flavor. They yeah. loved salads. So they would have picked things like sorrel and added um, different wildflowers, like the, the flowers of the chives. Oh, I to, saw these around, yeah. To add a bit of flavor. They would have had the chives as well to add a bit of flavor to the meat. Um, Beautiful. I mean, they were big meat eaters. So a lot of the diet would have been pork and deer. Yeah. Cows were mostly kept for its milk. So they would have had a lot of dairy products as well, so there would have been a lot of butter and cream added to their food, and porridge as well would have been quite popular as a breakfast dish to keep you going throughout the year. Yeah. And then if you had children, you could have sent them to the, and around this time to the beehives to get the honey. Wow. Have you ever tried the flowers of a chive? I have. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're really good. Yeah. So that's just basically a little bit of cabbage, a little bit of water. It doesn't matter if some falls out, we use the spoon here and mix it all up. And you'd be amazed how easy it is to cook cabbage. You saw me just throw in about a half a cup full of water and it's wilting down beautifully like that. We're just gonna season it. Would they have had salt and pepper back then? Oh, salt was a massive thing yeah. for them, yeah. Salt was a big, um, you would have said a big commodity. It would have been, a, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah they traded with it. Absolutely, yeah. you would have traded with it because yeah. it would have kept your meat preserved throughout the, the winter time. Yeah, twisted a pepper, would that have been around then? Um, not so much pepper, no. Pepper hmm. wouldn't have really been something that would have been added. Well, I can tell you one thing, they definitely wouldn't have had, they definitely wouldn't have had a jar of whole grain mustard, would they? Definitely not. <laughs> but that's the thing, we're gonna mix the old times with the new times. So a little bit of that, about a tea teaspoon, that's all you need. I think you should come to our dwelling more often. <laughs> Do you know what? I, this is right up my street, I love this kind of stuff. So, we're not a million miles off it already. Be amazed how quick that wilted down. Our cabbage is nearly done. Our parsley sauce is perfect, and I can't wait to have a look at this bad boy. So I put him on my carving board. What strikes me is, is the simplicity of it. I mean, these guys were far smarter than anybody gives them credit for. Absolutely. Everybody thinks that they just ate plain meat, yeah. no flavours. You know, they would have went out and got different herbs and spices. You know, he, um, horseradish from the hedgerows would have added to it. Um, the chives would have been used as a flavouring. Yeah. So the food wasn't just a plain boring food. Yeah. And they had really healthy as well. They had yeah. a really good healthy diet. So how many people would have been living in a dwelling like this? In this dwelling here, you would have had up to about 12 people living in it. And you would have had, say, grandparents, their children and their grandkids living in it. Wow, I'm gonna have to check it. Is it. And it's all kind of done up the way it was as well? It's exactly how you would have found it 2,000 years ago. Everyone's always asking me, how long does it go into the oven for? Into a pit, boiling water, about 86 hot rocks, 24 hours, 
and every 17 minutes, not 18 and not 16, every 17 minutes, throw in another rock. Absolutely. Is that good description? I think that's about right. Lovely stuff. Hold out that plate there now. And we're gonna spoon on our cabbage. Look at that. Nice and easy. Excuse the fingers, but do you know what? I bet you nobody said excuse my fingers 2,000 years ago. I doubt it. They were happy enough to be fed, weren't they? Yeah. There's a lot to be said for it. And my old parsley sauce. Right on top of that. I tell you what, they call it fusion. I call it 2,000 year old cooking meets Trevo. Have a look at this guys, and we're gonna get stuck in. So, my director, he got his dream and he got to dress Trevo up as a 2,000 year old Celt, but I actually really enjoy that. But I'm going in here now because I'm about to meet an archaeologist who's going to be able to tell me something about I know nothing about. And I'm going to go old school because I'm pretty sure they didn't have much of a currency back then or money back then. So I'm going bartering. Cider for knowledge. Ah, come on in, guys. James, how are you doing? Hi, Paul. I've just had an amazing experience cooking in a Fulloch Fia with Celtic Finn from 2,000 years ago. I learned how to cook like the Celts did 2,000 years ago. It's really interesting that uh, actually that cooking technique uh, dates back er earlier than that uh, into Bronze Age times, 4,000 years ago, and even earlier into uh, Neolithic times. Didn't I tell you this guy knows his stuff? I have a funny feeling we're going to need a cider for this chat, James. Will you take one? I will. This is from just down the road in Long Meadow from Pat, father and son team, Pat and Peter McKeever, and I, they showed me how to make this cider. Mm, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So, like, I'll be honest with you, I never really paid attention in school. Slaunch it. Slaunch it. And so I know nothing about the era that this is all based on, 2,000 years ago, who was around, or like, what was going on in this kind of area? Okay, well, um, in ancient times, this uh, area was uh, known as Awan Maha, which means the Twins of Maha. It's named after an ancient Celtic queen and goddess uh, called Maha. Um, um, there's many stories about the site and uh, what makes it interesting is the fact that it brings together Irish history, literature, archaeology and mythology. Wow. All these things come together at Awan Maha, now known as Navan. Ah, so that's where it got its name from. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me something about like kind of like the feasts that they would have gone to or the sacrifices they would have done or that kind of... Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting that you were cooking uh, pork earlier on because um, in the stories of the Ulster Cycle, um, the tales relate that uh, many feasts took place on top of Awan Maha. Uh, there was a feasting hall, there was the uh, Hall of the Red Branch, um, and within the, the, the palace of the feasting hall, um, uh, pork would have been served in, in the stories, and uh, one of the tales is um, uh, called Brickrew's Feast, and uh, in this tale, uh, Brickrew, who was the, the mischief maker of the tales, um, he invited uh, all the nobles and royalty to uh, a feast at his home in Loch Brickland, what's now Loch Brickland in County Down, and um, he said that uh, the hero's portion of a, of a roast boar would be served to the greatest warrior. Wow. I was telling the guys outside, like, I literally, I had never heard of this place. And I can't say enough that, that, like, this is a must visit. I mean, it's so interesting going back, like, thousands of years, seeing what they did, you know, all the information you've after saying, they have it inside in the centre, so people can say, just like, this was all excavated from around here. It's fascinating, I have to admit, I, yeah, I really enjoy this, it's different. You're only good at finding car keys, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, how did you find the cider? It's lovely. Was it a good trade, your knowledge for... Oh, absolutely. The Long Meadow Cider. Yeah, that's great. Well, I tell you what, to Pat and Peter McKeever, James, to yourself, and to all the guys here, I've had an absolute incredible time here in Arma, and uh, thanks so much. Really enjoyed that. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I have to admit, that was a really different episode than normal. I mean, like, I wasn't doing anything mad. I wasn't jumping around the place. I was, But, like, Trevo Travels is about you know, 
meeting people, meeting characters, and, and Pat and Peter, what they're doing with their cider, it's amazing. I absolutely love that story, and I wish them so well, and I hope that we're gonna be seeing that product everywhere, because it was fantastic. Coming here to the Navin Center and, and seeing what went on was amazing. Cooking with Finn, it was brilliant fun, absolutely brilliant, and sitting inside with James, telling me like how it really was 2,000 years ago and beyond. It was just, it was different, but I loved it. And that's what this show is about. I hope that we can bring you to places that you say, I wanna go visit there. You know, and like, just realize just how amazing this country is. We've got brilliant people, we've got brilliant facilities, we've got amazing places to visit, and we need to do that. And I hope that, you know, watching a show like this will make you come to places like this. I loved it, it was different. But come back next week, guys, because I'm continuing my travels. I have no idea where I'm going because I have no idea where I'm going. But I can guarantee you one thing, it's gonna be great fun. See you all next week, guys, on Trevo Travels.